As you're building websites in 90 Second Website Builder that are responsive, you may have noticed a setting in your responsive design configuration that you wouldn't recognize. Let me go take a look at that with you. Under the page menu, if we go to manage breakpoints, remember this is where we add our breakpoints. And for this particular site, I've already added a 320, a 768, and of course I have my default 1200. So I've added two breakpoints. I'm going to manage those breakpoints by clicking on that. And here they are. So the 1200 is not listed because it's my default, but these are the added breakpoints. The default will always be the largest one, and the added ones will always be smaller for mobile friendliness. But you may have noticed that we have a setting here called Include MinWidth in CSS3 Media Queries. Now, I know that's a lot of jargon we don't need to go into, but let me show you why I leave this box checked. First thing I'm going to do is uncheck it so I can show you the difference of what this means. I've unchecked it. I'm going to click OK, and we're going to do a preview of this website in a browser. I'm clicking F5 so I can preview my work. And what happens is when I shrink the browser down, this is a good way to test if my site is responding the way I want it to. Now it's important to note that what I'm doing, only a web designer would do. You might do this during your design process. This is not something the end user who looks at your website is typically going to do or know how to do. People don't look at websites like this. They don't enlarge and shrink. They usually just land on one size depending on the device. So if they're looking at your website on a desktop, it's going to be, you know, probably desktop size. If they're looking at it on a laptop, it might be closer to 800. And if they're looking at it on a tablet, somewhere in the 700s. And if they're looking at your website on a smartphone, somewhere from 320 to 480 is where they're going to land. People don't typically do this. But we do as web designers because when we do this, we're checking to see how our site responds. And as you can see, I'm looking at the desktop size and then here comes my 768 and then here comes my 320 right there. One of the things I want you to notice is as I'm stretching the browser, the change comes at one end of the breakpoint. Here's what I mean. Right now we're at the 320. As I'm dragging this browser window, I'm increasing it incrementally by one pixel. In other words, here we're at 320, then we're going to go 321, 322, 323, etc. until we get to a breakpoint called 768, which is way out here. Notice that the change came from 320. As soon as I got to 321, this changed. That means the breakpoint happens sometime right after 320 and will last until we get to 768. And as soon as we get one pixel past the 768, now we're around 769, now the breakpoint is here and that's going to last all the way up to 1200. So I'm going to say that again because I realize it's confusing. So right now, imagine you're at 320. Actually, we are at 320. But if I stretch this, as soon as I go past the 320, I'm now going to have a breakpoint right here, 321 or greater, that is designed for 768. Well, I could design one for 320 and 321 and 322, but then I'd have hundreds of breakpoints. We can't do that. We just want to use the most common ones because, again, people don't do this. They land one place or another. But you do have the option of where the breakpoint changes, at the beginning of this number or at the end. Here's what I mean. So while the breakpoint is changing here at 321 and lasting all the way until we get 768 and then at 769 it changes to the next one, we can change how that works by using this feature under Manage Breakpoints called Include Min Width in CSS3 Media Queries. Now my preference is for the breakpoints to be at the other end of the variation. Here's what I mean. It's best demonstrated visually. I'm checking the box. I'm going to click OK. And now I'm going to click F5 and watch the difference. As we're testing the responsiveness of our website, let's go down to the 320. Now you'll notice that while we're in the 320 here, even though we stretch beyond the 320, we're at 321, 322, somewhere beyond 320, we're still looking at the mobile version. We're still looking at the 320 version. And since the next variation I created was 768, this isn't going to change until we get to 768. So notice we're probably in the 400s, if not the 500s by now, in width, and it's going to stay with this design. This particular variation is going to show until the browser stretches to the next variation of 768. When we get to the 768, which is about right here, it has now changed. I prefer that because of the way I design. You have the option of doing the other. 
So again, here we are at 320. We're stretching all the way out. We're still looking at the 320 until we get to 767. Because as soon as we hit 768, it changes. And the same is true for the 1200. So we're going to stay at the 768. We're going to stay here until the browser stretches all the way out to the next variation, which in my case is 1200. I'm only using three variations, but you can see now why sometimes it's better to have more. Sometimes it's better to have five different variations. For example, we could have a 480, something in between 320 and 768, which is another very common viewport. And so it's one I would recommend using. I'm using three variations right now because the, to make the video demonstration simpler, I don't want to get too complicated, but you should know you can make as many as 25 variations. I really don't think you'll ever make that many or need to, but four or five or six variations could be quite nice. So again, let's take a look and see what's happening here. What I've done is I've created a 320, a 768, and a 1200. And because I've got my CSS queries set to include the minimum width, what that means is we're going to look at this 320 version of the website in the browser all the way up to and ending at 767 right here. I don't have to do that though. If I uncheck that box, it starts at the other end down here. That's just an important thing for you to recognize as you're working with responsive design. Now, since I have decided to do that, that's going to change the way I do certain things. For example, I'm going to add a responsive menu to this website. So let's go do that. I'm going to go to the navigation tools over here. Let me move the camera so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to grab the responsive menu. This is a special navigation tool that's designed to be used with responsive websites. So let's go like this. And let's just use one, for example, right here. Move the camera into place so you can see where I put it. So I've just made a really simple uh, responsive menu. Now I'm going to make it a little bit bigger, in fact. Let's double click on it and add some more items. I've got, uh, these are sort of preset template items. You can change all these items and you'll probably want to, of course, because you want this to match your website. But you would edit all of these things. I'm going to leave them for demonstration purposes and I'm going to add maybe one called contact us and we could add an icon. We'll use this and we'll click OK. And let's add another one just to make the menu bigger. We'll add this. We'll say products and let's find some kind of product that we sell. There we go. Amazon's products. And so we'll use that. And by the way, these icons all come to the Font Awesome library. So they're really great. They're smooth to look at. They're always going to look good on your website. We're going to click OK. And now we're going to go, OK, now we've got a little bigger menu here. And let's just say for sake of argument, we want to put this menu right here. So now that we have this responsive menu on the 1200 size, we have to go put it into our other variations, right? So let's go down to 768. Ah, look, something's different. Notice that the menu looks different. It's set to go vertical because of our breakpoint setting. And this is what it's going to look like. Now, I probably don't need it to look like this. 768 is probably not the place I want to break it to this. This would be great for the 320. So let's change the variation to 320 and move it into place. And you can see where this is probably going to be the right way for this to look. When we're at the 320, we do want this to be a vertical orientation menu. So that's probably right. But in our 768, we probably don't need it to look like this. So let's talk about this 768 variation of the page. I probably don't need the menu to switch to vertical when I go to 768 because it's really better for a 320. So let's go ahead and set this for 320 instead. I'm going to go to the style. Instead of breakpoint 768, let's make it breakpoint 320 and watch what happens. So now I've got my regular menu, which we can make bigger, in fact, for this, since 768 is that big. And we've got our 1200. And again, we can make it bigger. If we want to do this, we can. And we can also align this so that the objects appear over here, but we'll, we'll leave it here for now. So now I've got my 1200. I've got my 768, which I probably should stretch out a little bit more here. So it's closer to 768. In fact, I'm going to use the uh, Properties Inspector to make it exactly 768. There we go. That'll look a little bit cleaner. And then let's go to the 320 where we've got it here. So it all looks nice now that we've set this to break at 320. But there is going to be a problem. And I'll show you what it is. And we'll see it best when we preview. So remember, we've got all three breakpoints. And the change happens at 320. So if we preview and we look at the site here in the 1200, this is fine. It's nice and big. We go back to the 768. That's the way it's supposed to look. But when we get down here, uh-oh, 
See, we're below 768, but we're above 320. So if I'm looking at this website on a device between those two, it's going to look strange because we told the software not to do the break until 320. So we have to get all the way down to 320 here before we see this version of the menu. So here we are at 320, but at some point at 321, all the way up to where we get to a size that's more like 768, we have this strange look in here. So we have a couple of options. We can go back and we can change our CSS media query. Let's take a look at that. We'll manage our breakpoints. We'll check this off. We'll click OK. And we're going to F5 and see what that does. It's going to change where things break. So here we are in the 768 and here we are in the 320. So in this case, we might want to leave that unchecked or we could do it this way. We'll go to manage our breakpoints and we'll check it on. And again, that's going to give us that weird problem of where to break it because then we have this strange thing happening. So if we we're looking at this on, say, a 500 pixel device for some reason, it's going to look weird. But we can fix this very easily. All we have to do is type in a different number. Here's what I mean. When we double click on the menu, we don't have to choose 320. We can type in any number we want. We can have it change at about, oh, let's say 600. So we'll choose that. Now watch what happens. Now we've got our normal 1200. We've got our normal 768. And you'll notice that we don't break this now until about 600. So here we've got a vertical menu for 320 and beyond. And then when we get to the 600 is when it changes. Now the question here is, do I want this? Somewhere between 600 and 768, do I want it to look like that? And this is a decision you have to make as a designer. You have to say, well, is anybody going to look at this on a 600 pixel device? Well, they might. In fact, some tablets are 700. And so we might want to change that number. Or we might want to make a breakpoint at 480 or one at 700. This is a design decision. And this helps you make that decision because you can see what this is going to look like at pixel 600 through 768. So we could change the number or we could change the design. But you have all kinds of abilities here to set that up the way you want to. We could add a breakpoint or two. If, since we're using this kind of a menu, that might be a good thing to do. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to maybe 700. And again, this is a judgment call. You might think, well, why would I do that? Why would I want it to look weird at, you know, say this size? Well, the decision for me to do this is because I don't think there are many devices that are going to fit that particular parameter. It's a very short window of, of space. In other words, people looking at the website from 320 all the way up to 700 are going to see it just fine. It's that space between 700 and 768 that are weird. And I have to ask myself, do I really think there's going to be a device that's looking at this that's 701 through 767 or whatever that turns out to be? So that's a decision you have to make. And if you don't like that, you can change the numbers and or you can add breakpoints and design your viewports accordingly. I want to show you a resource that will help you make decisions about those viewports. I'm opening up my web browser and I'm going to a website called viewportsizes.com. These are the most common viewport sizes for different devices. And it's why we've been using the numbers we're using. If you want to look at what's common, you can see, and they're even uh, dated here, the release date of these devices, you can see what kind of devices that view websites have for portrait width and landscape width. So these are the most common numbers to be designing your breakpoints at. You'll notice we use 768 a lot, but another one that's common is 800. There's that 600. Uh, 1280 is a very common one. 1024 is a common width. And as you look at this and as you make the decisions of how you want to make your breakpoints, these are some good numbers to go by. The smallest you'll see is around 320, even though once in a while you'll see something smaller like this. But notice that we rarely go under 320. Sometimes we'll go up to 360, 480. The more breakpoints you make, obviously, the more work it is because you have to design for that. And then because you can set the CSS media query to be adjustable, you don't have to make a breakpoint for every device. But making three or five breakpoints will accommodate most people, especially if you look at the common numbers, 320, 480, maybe a 600 and a 768, maybe an 800 
and somewhere around 1,000 or 1024, somewhere around 1,200 or 1,280. That's why we end up with the numbers we end up with. Those are judgment calls for you to make, depending on how you design your site and what objects you want to use. If you want to use the responsive design menu like I just showed you, these would be numbers to take into consideration. So the bottom line is you have the ability to control how your website responds and for what device. Now, if you want kind of a black and white answer, and there isn't one, because remember, this is not just a science, it's an art. What I like to do is I like to use at least three 2768 and 1200. But if I want to make my site even more responsive, I will in fact add a 480 because you, as you can see, that was common. And often I'll add a 600. And sometimes I'll add something between 768 and 1200, like somewhere around 1000 or 1024. So if you want to make it even more responsive, you can do that. That's entirely up to you. You have a lot of flexibility. So learn how to test your site when you're designing it. Look at the F5, the preview, and play with the CSS media query setting. Again, mine is usually on, but you might find in your case, it's better for it to be off. I have found in most cases, it works better checked on. So if you're not sure, start with it checked on and then play with it from there. So those are the tools you have to work with. A lot of different flexibility, a lot of different design options. And again, it depends on the tools you use and how you lay out your websites in 90 Second Website Builder.